net earnings up 16% to 1.5 billion shillings, a result largely of premium growth. Are you happy and satisfied with these results? Well, as a corporation which is focused on growth, you can never be satisfied. But for <laughs> now, we are happy with what we've done. We believe there's scope for greater growth uh, in the years to come. Uh, but we must say that uh, the, the results we've achieved are above our target. So we are satisfied, but we are not complacent. We are not satisfied. We want to grow more uh, in the future. All right. Now, we know that we've seen uh, significant premium growth, but we've also seen a rise in claims. Going forward, how are you going to try to limit some of the impairments that may come from claims? Uh, naturally, as you grow insurance business or insurance business generally, as the premium grows, you expect the claims also to grow. The trick is in trying to make sure that the growth in premium uh, is in excess of the growth in the claims. And that, of course, comes in through prudent underwriting, making sure that you're taking in only quality business and, and uh, avoiding uh, or keeping your loss ratio as low as is possible. But an increase in claims uh, uh, loss ratio as it were, or claims in, in volumes of 12% compared to a 30% growth in premium, in my view, is acceptable. Investment growth somewhere in the region of 54% and definitely we're seeing new opportunities with new insurers rising, coming to the fore, listing for instance of CFC insurance tomorrow. So there are lots of scope within East Africa. But many experts believe that 54% comparatively speaking is not an exciting figure. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, it's, it's sometimes it's deceptive to just look at percentages, look at the quantum in, in absolute numbers, then uh, you, you realize that it is very possible. In our case, uh, investment income is a combination of two aspects. There's a rental income, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's there, it's given, it's, uh, it's, it's factual. And there's the investment aspect. Now, the investment in terms of uh, treasury bills, in terms of treasury boards, in terms of shares in companies, in terms of bank deposits, how much you realize, in my view, depends on how well you're able to uh, shift your portfolios to put you most of your money or the bulk of your money uh, to where the returns are the highest. Let's talk but, uh, about... But 53% is exactly what we achieved. It is, it is a realistic, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's reality, it's fact. Let's talk about your investment strategy going forward because what we've already started to see is with falling interest in uh, government yes. treasuries, you're trying to limit your exposure to government uh, bills and bonds. What are you going to do going forward? High yielding equities, is that where you're going to be putting a lot of your money? Uh, our investment strategy is informed by the issue of uh, uh, you know, fundamentals that underlie uh, investments generally. You have to balance between uh, risk and return. Risk in the sense that uh, you must, of course, be worried uh, to make sure that your investments are secure and return, of course, to maximize. And the balance of this really is, is uh, what informs our investment strategy. But uh, by and large, yes, we are going to shift uh, um, the bulk of our money to the investment vehicles that are given the highest return. Mm -hmm. Of course, subject to the caveat, I said that uh, they are not, they are not uh, too risky to invest in. And that is what informed, uh, what is so far informed our decision to move the bulk of the money, for example, from the treasury bills, as you say, and put it, say, in bank deposit, where the interest, interest rates are almost three times more. Right. Now, some analysts have been looking at your numbers say that we could have seen higher income. Were you not involved in some squabble over a piece of land on Ngong Road where you've made a bid for about 350 million Kenyan shillings? How do you respond to that? Uh, they are right in the sense that uh, what has happened to the net income of the uh, corporation this year is that there is that knock effect of 350 million out of the piece of land you referred to. And this is in line with the international accounting standards that when you realize an asset is faced with impairment, uh, uh, the moment this knowledge comes to you, you're supposed to provide for the entire value of that uh, piece of land, which is what has happened to us. And yes, if that didn't happen, our income at the bottom line would have been 350 million Kenya shillings more. But uh, it is not really a scramble for a piece of land. It is just that uh, we got informed by the forest department that there was an issue with the gazettement of that piece of land. And for that reason, in our own prudence, we decided let us provide for it as facts and the issues around the mm -hmm. piece of land are resolved. 
also the markets responded to your results also with the hope that there's going to be a final dividend of 35 cents. Um, just talk to us about what needs to happen now by way of approval. By, for the dividends? Yes, sir. Uh, the dividends, like uh, I alluded to, what we normally do is that uh, we have a policy which pays, on average, 30% of the income, the board of directors of the mandate to vary that uh, percentage. And uh, normally we make a proposal of the, the dividends that we intend to pay out, which is 30% of the net income, adjusted for the natural things like uh, a few, some uh, ident specific capital, uh, capital expenditures, or non-cash items such as depreciation or revaluation in properties and then whatever figures we arrive at we take them to AGM and then they approve it. If it is approved we make the payout. If the AGM is of a different opinion we, we still incorporate it. But this far uh, what we've noticed is that uh, if we've done the computations properly and we take it to the AGM most likely our shareholders will accept uh, our proposal. Effectively, what we're seeing from your results is earnings per share up to about uh, two shillings 57, which are, you know, modest gains, I'd say. And the question is, what are you going to do going forward for value addition for your shareholders? Uh, the main sources of income is what we are going to focus on to try and enhance it. And the main one, of course, is the premium income. We are going to try and enhance the earnings from our underwriting operations in terms of increased market uh, share in the markets that we are already in, in terms of increased uh, you know, product uh, reinsurances for greater products in terms of diversification into new products, in terms of developing new markets, so that at the end of the day we increase the premiums. Of course, uh, at all the times we keep in view or uh, the you know prudent handwriting, so that we don't just grow the top line and it comes in with claims. Now that's one arm of the in income. The other arm of the income is the inv investment side, and which, like I've said, we're going to, with a v of course, after balancing or you know keeping in view the balance between risk and li and uh, return, we're going to invest in asset or in investment vehicles that we feel will maximize returns for the corporation. Now when you put these two together is what basically becomes the income of the company going forward and it is that income which determines the earnings right. per share. So we've got a host of strategies to inform both the investment as well as the marketing. Uh, I mean the growth in premium including right. aggressive marketing including you know uh, um, you know just efficient ways of doing business all right we have to leave it there thank you very much for your time